Profitability is an important factor when deciding whether you should invest in a company. You want to put your money into something that's going to do well, right? Obviously. Well, today I'm going to explain how to understand the company's profit and loss statement. I'm Kalila Rounds, and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA. Money Mondays JA is brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media and Bulwark Insurance Agency. Looking for affordable insurance? Visit bulwarkja.com. Follow them on social media at official bulwarkja. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever there is a new video. Also, subscribe to my newsletter at kalilorunnels.com newsletter and check out the website where you can read a transcript of this episode. So the profit and loss statement summarizes the company's operation from how much money is made by the company to how much is spent to keep the business in operation. It's very important as the information it contains is like gold to finance people. Investors especially may review and analyze the P&L statements of a company over a number of years before they decide to invest. It's where they come to get their questions answered, confirm their predictions on a company's performance, or use current or past information to make forecasts on how they expect the company to perform in the future. It's one of the first things that I definitely look at when deciding to invest. So banks and other financial institutions also look at a company's P&L when they're thinking about lending to a company as they need to know that the company will be able to service any loans that may be provided. Now, when we look at a P&L statement, what do we see? What can we learn? You should be able to identify revenue generated from the sale of its products or services over the financial period. From the P&L statement, you can also see the costs associated with operating the company, interest payments, taxes, and finally, the net profit. That is what remains after all the expenses are accounted for. So let's take a look at Honeybun to understand the line items on the P&L statement of a manufacturing company and how finance people analyze them. So Honeybun generates revenue from manufacturing and distributing baked goods such as donuts, cinnamon rolls, bread, goldie, and crackers. The first item on the P&L statement is the revenue line, also referred to as the top line because you know it's right there at the top. The revenue line tells us how much money the company made over the year. For the financial year ending September 2020, this company made almost 1.7 billion Jamaican dollars from selling and distributing its baked goods. That was a slight increase from the 1.5 billion that it earned in 2019. In analyzing a company's revenue and forecasting what revenue they may generate in the future, we need to understand what they do to earn revenue the economy that the company is operating in, and all the things that may cause revenue to change. Now, the next line item is cost of sales. As Honeybun is a manufacturing company, cost of sales would include the cost of anything that was directly involved in producing the baked products that the company sells. So this means that when production goes up, cost of sales may go up, or when production goes down, cost of sales may go down. Cost of sales here includes the cost of raw materials such as flour and sugar, the salary costs of the bakers who bake the goods or the mixers who combine the ingredients, and lastly, utilities such as electricity, gas, and water. Again, we'll need to ask questions like, what cost caused the cost of sales to go up? Did the price of flour or gas or electricity go up? So the profit and loss statement for a service-oriented company, let's say a financial company, does not have cost of sales because they are not manufacturing anything. They simply just state their revenue lines. So if we look at Barita's profit and loss statement, for example, we see that the revenue lines are easy to understand. They earn interest from issuing loans and leases. They also make fee and commission income from issuing loans in their capacity as asset managers 
or as member dealers of the GSC. Now back to Honeybun's P&L. The next line item is gross profit. Gross profit is total revenues, less cost of sales. Investors and other financial people use the gross profit to calculate the gross profit margin. The gross profit margin tells how much of the revenue is left after accounting for cost of sales. Investors watch this metric to see how well companies are keeping costs down. The objective of a company is to be profitable, and they do this by keeping costs low and revenues high, so investors keep track of this metric to see how companies manage their costs. Now the next line item is other operating income. This line captures income that is not generated doing just the regular day-to-day -day operation of the business. These may be one-off income such as gain from the sale of an asset or foreign exchange gain or dividends from another company's stock that the company actually owns. Yeah, companies can own other companies' uh, stocks. The next line items are expenses that are incurred in operating the business such as administrative, selling, and distributive expenses. These expenses go up and down year over year. Sometimes, like cost of sales, these expenses may increase as a result of the company producing more goods, taking on more staff, or something like a one-off equipment breakdown. To understand what causes these costs to change, an investor would look at the notes to the financial statements to see what changed. So looking at note eight here, we can see that salaries have increased. We can go further to see if the number of staff members may have also increased for the year. We look at note nine and we see that in 2020, they had 201 staff members, whereas in 2019, they had 180. So the more employees they have, the more money they will have to pay out in salaries, naturally. Salary and distribution expenses also increased. And here we can see that advertising and promotion increased from 24 million in 2019 to 36 million. And that's a big jump. Advertising and promotion is related to sales, right? So maybe Honeybun increased revenue because they dedicated more resources to advertising and promotion. And we can even speculate further to say that with the closure of schools, hotels, and many other businesses, they had to increase their promotion in export markets and also to parents to influence them to buy Honeybun products when they go to the supermarket since you know, the kids aren't buying them at school. So next up is impairment gain or loss in financial assets. This may be due to revaluation of an asset and the revalued cost turns out to be more than what was recorded by the company. The expenses and impairment gain are applied and then we get operating profit. Unlike the gross profit, the operating profit will be compared to the top line item revenue to see how much revenue remains after cost of sales, expenses, and other light items that, continue, that come between revenue and operating profit are taken into consideration. The higher the operating margin, the better the company is at managing costs. A term that the financial people use is efficiency. So the higher the operating profit margin is, they will say the more efficient a company is at managing its costs. Now after this, finance income and finance costs. Some companies earn interest on financial securities such as preference shares and bonds issued by other companies and they pay interest on their loans and leases extended to them from financial companies. Depreciation or appreciation in the value of investments is not a popular line item on the P&L statement of manufacturing companies, but in Honeybun's case, they do own shares in a number of listed companies. We can look at note 14 to see that the company holds shares in General Accident, Panjam, and Wisinko, just to name a few. Therefore, this line item captures any movement in stock price from the start of Honeybun's financial year to the end of its financial year. So we factor in these line items and then we are at profit before taxation. Factor in taxation and then we're at the final line item, net profit or the bottom line. This is one of the most important line items. It's the line item that investors look at as it helps them to decide if they want to invest in a company. They look at the net profit margin to see how well the company has managed its costs. 
A company's revenue or top line can be very high, increasing year after year, but its net profit line is falling because they're not able to control costs. So looking at a P&L statement and understanding each line item is one thing. To get a true understanding of the company's performance, we have to compare a company's revenue, net profit, gross profit margin, net profit margin, and other ratios that the finance people use over a number of years. Based on the movement of revenue, net profits, and these ratios, we can determine whether or not this could be a good investment for us. Now, we can also compare the figures of other companies in the sector to see how they're performing and compare results to identify the better performing company. We should also keep track of economic events to better understand figures that companies report. For example, uh, for the next quarter, some companies may have higher than normal cost of sales as we've been hearing about the increased cost to ship containers from China. Some companies are struggling between increasing the price of their goods, which may result in less sales and the increased transportation costs to get their raw material to them. So financial statements really do tell a story and the P&L statement is like the peak or the climax of that story, the part that is most anticipated and the part that has the most influence on how we actually feel about a company. Well, that's it for this episode of Money Mondays, JA. I hope it will help to make it easier to read, understand, and analyze a company's P&L. Did you learn something new in this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Now, here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. So, Jamaica officially has its own digital currency, but how secure is it and how can you get some? On this episode of Taking Stock, I have an exclusive sit down with the founder and CEO of eCurrency, Jonathan Dharmapalan, and BOJ Deputy Governor Natalie Haynes will tell us about the central bank's rollout plan. We provide the bank with the cryptographic engines that can go through that process and to ensure that it cannot be counterfeited. And in September, we will begin issuing to National Commercial Bank. So persons who are interested in getting digital currency, who at this time, they may contact National Commercial Bank in terms of having a CBDC wallet. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Jamaican T's net profits are up $8 million. Um, when it is that you look at the local sales um, in terms of the manufacture from manufactured operations, there's an increase. However, that is really for local side. So there are seen increases for local sales, but on the export side, there's actually a dip. And over in the US, inflation is spreading to more parts of the economy. The, the bigger picture showed is that there are certain areas that are still growing. So for example, consumer foods, you know, persons are buying a lot more food at the supermarket. And then right now there's a mismatch in terms of the demand for certain items, items versus the supply. While Target is benefiting from an increase in spending. So the earnings year over year actually leaped 7.38 times um, to 2.1 wow. billion. Now don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter where you can read a transcript of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kalila Ray and on Facebook at Kalila Reynolds Media. If you're into podcasts, find us on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Let's get this money. Money Mondays JA was brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media and Bulwark Insurance Agency. Looking for affordable insurance? Visit bulwarkja.com. Follow them on social media at officialbulwarkja.com.